Hey everybody, this is Rob Keynes from goldsilverpros.com. It is Monday, October 4th, 2021. And that means typically it would be Mining Stock Monday where we take a look at our favorite mining stock of the week and do a review for you, giving you the pros and the cons. But I'm gonna take a little bit of a break from that this week as I don't have one that I wanna look at. But instead I wanted to talk about the sector, talk about precious metals and why we stack the shiny and why in particular shiny has its value. And I'm gonna talk about basically the commodities life cycle. And I'm gonna show you some data on that and just have sort of a real argument about that. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because we're called gold silver pros. We're not PM bulls or just stack the shiny or any channel like that. We look at the precious metals and economics from a professional perspective, and that means A to Z end to end. And so what we do is we look at the entire resource sector and I'll provide data on where commodities are. I'll provide data on where gold and silver is. And it's not just the shiny stuff. So we like the shiny. This is the five ounce coin uh, that Yara from Arcadia Economics gave me at the Money Metal Summit. Those of you who attended that uh, saw her give this to me as just an appreciation for our friendship and, and um, you know all the things that we've done together over the years. Nice piece of shiny silver there. And it's got the calendar on the back. I want to say this is the Aztec of the Mayan calendar. I think Mayan calendar, may, maybe perhaps. It's really beautiful. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. There we go. Look at the intricate design on the back of that coin. Of course, this is a five ounce coin too which is really nice, has a lot of value in here. We love the silver, that's one type of shiny. Over here, I have a one ounce Perth Mint Gold bar, which is a beautiful piece. I actually love the Perth Mint bars. I know that we've criticized you know, how they've handled their, their accounting statements, but they produce some of the most beautiful metal, I think. There's a mint mark on the back, a little kangaroo, if you can see. Gorgeous bar in its assay case. So, you know, just like everybody else, I like to stack the shiny. And, but we're not just a stack the shiny channel. And let me explain why that matters. A lot of people that come to the channel may not understand the commodities life cycle. They may not understand economics. They just know that they want to get gold or silver to protect them from inflation. And they've caught on to the Wall Street silver movement or whatever recent movement is talking about stack the shiny and nothing wrong with that whatsoever. However, we get these from somewhere and without that process, we don't have it. Not only do we not have the gold and the silver, we don't have any commodities. And that's what I wanna talk about today, the importance of the overall process. Without the time, effort and money that goes into pulling this out of the ground, gold does not have value. What gives it its value is basically labor. And you could also say energy and all those other things, but usually it's wrapped up in the labor because to get the energy, it took labor to get the energy, which then you know went into mining the gold. That's why it has value. It has value because it's divisible, it's portable, it's durable, and it, and it has value built into it. And you could call this, you know, for you Bitcoiners, uh, proof of work. In other words, the work's been done to get the value in this. And this is why it doesn't lose value over time. It retains value, unlike fiat currencies, which lose value over time because they're printed at the touch of a keystroke on a computer or by running the printing press. These things are not. You have to pull them out of the ground. Now, we're going to talk about the process to get these out of the ground and why these have value. Okay, and I'm going to give you some charts and things and just kind of chat through this and, and have a nice conversation on it. And this is in response, to be quite honest, to the criticism I've gotten for supporting the mining sector. People are like, Rob, you're a shill for the mining sector, or you have these companies on and blah, 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 blah. The reason I have that is because without those companies, we don't have these. These don't exist. You don't have them. Not only do you not have the gold and the silver, you don't, we don't have the materials required to make that bookshelf back there, the speakers in front of me, the camera I'm recording this from, the fiber optics that carry the internet signal that you guys are watching this over, our cars, our homes, our clothes, our wood, our anything. We, we don't have anything. And we go back to that period of time, which I used to tongue in cheek say, naked with a spear chasing bison, like the Native Americans who basically just had a loincloth and maybe in the winter they had you know a nice fur coat. But they were basically naked with spears chasing after bison and, and, and eventually they got horses. That's the way we used to live. And that wasn't all too long ago, guys. It wasn't too long ago before the Industrial Revolution. That's how people lived. And because of the Industrial Re Revolution and mining and, and refining this stuff, that's how we have all of this stuff that you see on this presentation and everything required to bring you this presentation and the wonderful lifestyle that we have. And, and I cannot overemphasize that enough. So this is the, the, the important reason we stack the shinies because the value built in. And I'm going to explain to you why there's value built into the cycle. So I'm going to start off with an exhibit uh, that was provided to me by a good friend, Ann Bridges, the Silicon Valley author, 
who came to my conference last year and we were talking specifically about rare earths and she provided me this really cool diagram about how you get from mining the rare earths to processing it, getting it ready for all these applications like green energy, cell phones, military applications, satellites, jet fighters, light bulbs. But this process really is about the same for any commodity. Now they're slightly different per commodity and I'm not gonna nitpick here, but we can use this process to understand just about anything you pull out of the ground that goes into an end product you see here on uh, the right side of the chart. So it goes from mining. So we have to have miners to get it from the ground to crushed ore. Then you mill it, you grind and get the free minerals. You can use hydrometallurgy, which is using water separation to get the, the oxides or the metals in case of gold and silver. I've seen that at mines in Mexico where they use water mixed with some chemicals to get it out. You separate and purify it and then you refine it to meet downstream applications. So this process is about the same as what you would see in the metals. Okay, that's the overall process. I wanted to also bring you some information on how much of this we use. For those of you who don't understanding the mining process or the value of it, or the value of you know, what goes into this cell phone that you're using, right? Here's a cell phone you're using, the camera I'm using to record this, the car that you're in, uh, your iPad, all that kind of stuff uses a lot of minerals. So here's some statistics from Minerals Education Coalition. Every American born will need 2.96 million pounds of minerals, metals, and fuels in their lifetime. So 2,069 pounds of bauxite, which is aluminum, 11,379 pounds of clays, 223,973 pounds of coal, 17,000 pounds of iron ore, 776 pounds of lead, 13.5 thousand pounds of phosphate, 27,000 pounds of salt, 1.32 million pounds of stone, gravel, and sand, 444 five pounds of zinc, 7.67 million cubic foot of natural gas, 828 pounds of copper, 52,000 pounds of cement, 1.5 troy ounces of gold, 65,170 gallons of petroleum, and 54,000 pounds of other minerals. Notice here how gold is the smallest number. That's why gold has so much value. If you look at the chart over here, it has so much value because it's equivalent to all these other things. In other words, this is storing the value of all the money used to buy all this other stuff. And that's why gold has so much value. And we think it's undervalued now. There's another little chart here. Let me blow this one up just a little bit, talking about this as well. Every year, every year, listen to this, 38,272,000 pounds of new minerals must be provided for every person in the United States to make the things we use daily. Every year, the person will need 10,000 pounds of stone, 6,000 pounds of sand and gravel, 682 pounds of cement, 221 pounds of iron ore, so on and so forth. 20 pounds of other metals, 27 pounds of soda ash, six pounds of zinc, 10 pounds of lead. For the lifestyle that you have, the roads that you drive on, the buildings that you live in, the communications and technology that we use, 38,000 pounds every year to every person in the United States, okay? Which adds up to 2.96 million pounds of stuff that every person needs. Now, why is that important? I'm trying to impress upon you the importance of, of miners and mining and refining in the life cycle. I know a lot of people like to come on my channel and demonize me for advocating the miners, but without the miners, you don't have all that stuff you just saw that we need on a daily basis to live and you sure as hell don't have this. So yeah, it's great to stack the shiny, but look, if all we do is stack the shiny and we don't support the miners and the other resources needed like zinc, lead, copper, all that kind of stuff. One, again, we're naked with a spear hunting bison just to survive and we leave a, lead a very brutal and short life. Two, we don't have the precious metals with which to store value. And remember, one and a half troy ounces for all the other million pounds of stuff that we talked about is why gold has so much value because it's representing all the value to create all that other stuff that you're using. It's representing value in the economy. Of course, silver being more industrial as well. We don't have that stuff, okay? And we don't have the shiny that you need to stack tomorrow. So let's say, you know, worst case scenario, all we do is stack the shiny, we just buy this stuff. Nobody contributes to commodities. You let the stocks and bonds get overvalued because they're getting all the money. Commodity sector gets nothing. There's supply destruction across the commodity cycle. We, we lack stuff, okay? The economy then collapses because all those millions of jobs created and all that kind of stuff. And we don't have supplies to live. And then those of us who have the metals are fine. But what happens if we get to that Mad Max scenario where we can completely ignore the commodity life cycle and don't fund it? Guess what? The people with the guns or the maybe spears are going to come kill you for what? This. But they may actually not kill you for this. They may just come and take your food and your supplies. Okay. So taking the, the uh, approach that I only want to stack the shiny and ignore the rest of the commodities and the rest of the commodity life cycle is very short-sighted and can lead to very, very, very bad things. Let's go over some more data for you guys. I've got more data. 
to talk to you about. Here is a nice little chart from PwC. It's one of the big four companies talking about the value of mining in each of these in each of these countries. So it's the top 40 mining companies value uh, within each of these nation state areas. So in America, they produce 123.15 billion, Canada with 34.28 billion, Asia Pac 288.63 billion, EMEA 132.59 billion. Look at all the billions of dollars that go into the resource development, refining and mining. Remember that life cycle I showed you at the beginning, not just in the shiny, not just into the end product, the shiny, but into this entire process. $544 billion globally in 2020 went into the commodity sector. And that's an underfunded commodity sector. Think about it, what it's going to be when the commodity super cycle really gets going, like it started to, how much value there's going to be in that. And the value is not just in the end product. The value is in the mining and getting out of the ground. Because remember, we're not just talking gold and silver. We're talking every product that we use on an everyday basis, which amounts to almost 3 million pounds of stuff in an average human's lifetime in the United States. Uh, so this is really good. And it talks about oil, or I'm sorry, copper is in black, iron ore is in silver, uh, coal is right here in light silver, uh, this dark one is uh, gold, and then the light red is aluminum, then you got platinum and palladium, and then you got other, okay? Notice how there's a tremendous value in the commodities life cycle and in producing this stuff in the mining companies, okay? 500, almost a, a half a trillion bucks, okay? What would happen to the economy if we didn't do that? We would lose that half a trillion bucks, but what else would we lose, okay? Well, let's look at something from the USGS, US Geological Survey. They've got some nice little charts in here. What's the value of commodities? Why do we care? Rob, Rob why are we raining on that? Well, let's look at, as of 2019, the role of non-fuel minerals in the US economy. You have exports of mineral uh, raw materials like gold, soda, ash, zinc up here, 3.7 billion. Domestic raw, material, uh, raw materials for mining, copper ores, iron ore, sand, 86.3 billion. Metals and mineral products, Recycled aluminum, glass, steel, 36.1 billion. Net exports of old scrap, gold, steel, et cetera, 9.7 billion. Processed domestically, net exports, all that leads to $3 trillion. So out of a $21 trillion gross domestic product, that includes all the service companies, all that stuff. Okay, one, about eighth of this value is in the commodities market. And that's what commodities undervalued. What's it gonna be when it hit that commodity super cycle? So commodities are a major part of the U.S. economy. Without it, the U.S. economy collapses. If you took $3 trillion out of the U.S. economy now, it would collapse, okay? That $3 trillion needs investment. It needs investment or the economy collapses and we don't have the products we use every day and you don't get your shiny either. You can't have this without mining, processing and refining. It doesn't, where are you gonna get it, okay? You're gonna go dig it up in your backyard yourself. You're gonna go get your oil yourself, stuff like that, you're not. So that's the importance of it. And here's some information on imports. So not only do we want to invest in mining companies around the world that are producing the shiny and other products, we want to invest in the United States. And the reason why is if you look at here, USGS, major import sources of non fuel mineral commodities for which the United States has greater than 50% net import reliant, meaning we import over half of our stuff. Look at the countries and we import 19 to 24 products. From 19 to 24 products, we import half of it from Canada and from China. Luckily, Canada is one of our friendlies. China, they're kind of friendly from a trade perspective, but politically, geopolitically, not so much. Mexico, 7 to 12. Brazil, 7 to 12. Russia, 7 to 12. Belarus, and Ukraine. Uh, I think those are in the 1 to 3. Australia, 7 to 12. South Africa, 7 to 12. Gabon, Rwanda, Mozambique. Look at all the places which we're reliant on other countries for our supply minerals to live every day. Do we not want to fund U.S. businesses? We need to fund U.S. businesses so we're not so reliant on the geopolitical economy. What do we talk about could be one of the causes of the crash of the U.S. system? The current account deficit with China and the fact that we're uh, exporting our debt and our inflation of the monetary system, which is going to come back to roost and kick our ass when China gets tired of it. Okay, That's why we buy the gold and the silver. But it's on this chart that we depend upon these other nations. So if we invest in the mining and the refining sectors here in the U.S., maybe we depend on these U.S. nations a little bit less. So that's just a point I wanted to make. Lots of good charts here. Value of metals and metallic minerals produced in 2019, I want to show by region. So if you look at the South, most of where we get our valuable minerals and metals in the United States, for the United States, is in the South. I live in Texas. We happen to have, you know, in the $11.5 billion category as a state production of metals and minerals. 
uh, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, Georgia, the Virginias, uh, Tennessee, Florida, all those states in between, the Southeast produces $11.5 billion in value. Okay, major contributors. Think about all the jobs that would be destroyed if we didn't finance the miners, the refiners, the processors, the transporters, all that kind of stuff. That's the value that we have. And you look at borates, barite, ball clay, bromium, all the way to zeolites. That's all the stuff that we produce, the minerals and the metals. Okay, this is a major sector and a major part of our economy. Now, of course, the West does produce a lot too. It's $8.4 billion. The Midwest is $8.8 .8 billion. And the Northeast is 1.7. So we all contributing to each other, by the way. So think about the secession movement and, you know, politically for a second, if somebody seceded, what if Texas seceded? How much minerals would we be net short in the United States? What if California seceded? What if the Midwest decided to break off into its own political structure? See, we all work together and that's the importance of the system. Last thing I wanted to show you, why do gold in particular, but also silver, hold value over time. Why do we care about stacking the shiny in the first place? It's because of this. Nice little visual here at Visual Capitalist, total production per person. This is 2019. I've showed this before. I'm going to show it again. 2019, silver coins minted 23 cents per person. 2019, gold coins minted $1.42 per person, meaning these are relatively rare when we talk about that versus money supply. In the increase of money supply in 2019, $556 per person. That's not looking at 2020 when we had the verticalness in the M1 and M0 charts. This number would be, if this were 2020 numbers, it would be in the thousands, thousands per person because 40% of all M1 ever created in existence in the United States was created in one year in 2020. So this is 2019. This is before dollars exploded. And even though gold production went up 14% okay, in 2020, it's nowhere near the explosion in dollars. So this chart would be a lot bigger. Per one ounce of minted silver, 44K increase in global supply. Per one ounce of minted gold, 593K in global supply. That's why these hold value over time. They're a lot more rare compared to other commodities and compared to the currency that we use in our fiat system. So yes, we want to stack the shiny. But guess what? If we don't fund the front end of this process, let's go back to that, that chart that Ann Bridges gave me. Silicon Valley author. Okay, She worked in Silicon Valley for a long time. She worked for companies that did all of this on the right. And that's what led her to understand this process. That's why I do mining stock Mondays. That's why I talk about mining, milling, hydro, metallurgy, separation, refining, all that stuff. Not only in rare earths, but in everything. Because without it, we don't have lifestyle and we don't have this. You know, and, and at the end of the day, people would starve. My parents grew up during the Great Depression. They starved. Okay, my mother lived on a farm. She still starved, but she didn't die. They had enough to survive. Uh, the people that lived in the cities, it was a nightmare. Okay, when it comes to tough economic times, Yes, we need the shiny, but we also need commodities. We need foods. We need clothes. We need all of that stuff. We have got to fund that stuff. If we don't fund that stuff and we have a lack of materials, our life is going to get so much harder. And again, no longer tongue in cheek. I'm going to be serious about this. We're naked. We're hunting bison with spears. That's what we're going to go back to. That's why I advocate for the mining sector and I talk about the whole mining supply cycle. That's why I'm not PM bulls or shiny stackers. That's not the name of my channel. And the name of my channel is Gold Silver Pros. We take a professional approach to the entire industry start, start to back. Okay, We bring you economic knowledge. We bring you, you know, stack the shiny and the importance of gold and silver. But we also tell you how to invest in that space for two reasons. One, because we don't get an investment. We're all fucked, basically. And I'm telling you right now, we're not just fucked in gold and silver. We're fucked in all of our commodities. That's why I talk about it. We need to support the mining sector. Second of all, as we're about to go through a commodity super cycle and people that invest in that are going to get rich. OK, that can help you offset along with the gold and silver, along with the physical commodity. That can help you offset because you're buying cheap and will sell high later. These uh, equities in this space, they're going to receive tremendous value. The gold and silver companies, the zincs, the leads, all of those, they're going to increase. Look at the uranium series I did with Steve Mueller. We did four or five parts to that and how we called the uranium boom. And it went to 50 bucks. Now I realize it's down a little bit, but it's in a boom. And what's going on with the uranium sector? Look at what copper's done. Look at what tin has done. Look at what lumber did. All of these materials are being demanded. And a way that you can offset the, the destruction of your money supply and the stealing of your money by the central bank is one, to buy in the shiny. And once you get enough shiny that you're happy with that and you've got your position, look at the equities. Don't forget the equities. Without the equities, we don't have future production of this stuff. The, the, the shirt on my back, the razor I need to shave because I've got a little bit of growth. The camera, like I said, we don't have any of it. 
Okay. And we go back to, to a lifestyle that you guys, I'm pretty sure don't want. I remember my mother and father telling me about the great depression. You do, trust me, you do not want in the great war. We don't want to go there. Okay. So we need to make sure we have a fresh supply of commodities. And remember the chart I showed you from the USGS and our dependence upon other nation states across the world, a lot of which are not geopolitically friendly to us, whether that's our fault or not, is another point. They're not friendly to us. And we have dependence upon 15 to 20 key commodities. Think about rare earths and in our, in our, how China has a chokehold on about 90% of the mining and development of that. Okay, If you just invest in rare earths and you don't develop your mining in the United States, China controls that. That's why we want to invest in domestic production of minerals, gold, silver, and everything else, polymetallic, rare earths, all of it, to maintain economic independence. Because guess what? If you're just Stack the Shiny and you only come here to the channel for Stack the Shiny and you don't understand everything that I just explained on this video, you're screwed because you may have some Shiny, but you don't have any products to buy it with. And then how does that help you? Okay. There are lots of reasons I advocate for this sector. One, because it's a pros channel, gold, silver, pros. We talk about the entire development life cycle too. We advocate for the miners and the refiners because we need, the, and the equipment companies, all of that. That's why we did the video yesterday on the Silver Strand uh, mine, because we have a new company uh, that Lakewood, that's basically coming in to develop that Silver Strand mine. We need silver. So we talked about Lakewood and did a mine tour. They didn't pay us for that. That was a freebie. Okay, we went out to mine tour, took our camera, our expense to go out there, recorded the video, talked about it. It's not a sponsor of the program. And I did it to explain to you how mining works and how hard it is. You saw the hole in the side of the mountain that they got the silver from get, and the drill that they're going to drill to find it. This is going to take a couple of three years to develop this project. And that's why these have value. That's why silver has value. It's the proof of work. It's the work put into producing it that matters. So I'm advocating for that part of the life cycle because without it, we don't have the lifestyle we have and we sure as hell don't have the shiny for tomorrow for our kids you know, for us to save and to save value when the central bank is basically robbing us of everything that we have. Okay. So I think this is a, a good topic of presentation. This is going to be content I think will be helpful to the channel that'll separate us from other channels. They don't talk about this stuff. They say, just stack the shiny, but where does that shiny come from? Who needs to invest in that? How do we need to invest in these critical minerals to maintain our economic independence? That's a much bigger issue from China and from these other nation states. Okay, we can't produce everything, but if we produce more and we support our own mining and refining processes, we're so much more independent. And that's when Ann Bridges came to my conference last year, Silicon Valley author, worked in Silicon Valley, was an executive management there, is very intelligent and understands this process. That's why she talks about it. That's why she writes about it. That's why she wrote the book about the rare earths. And so the people understand our critical dependence upon this and we can have independence from other nation states like China and others that may not be friendly to us forever. Look at the political problems going on in South Africa. We have friendly relations with them, but they, they, they and Russia produce the vast majority of platinum palladium, which we need for catalytic conversions. We don't have it. You, you can't have an automobile in today's society. I'm sorry, you can't. So we need to, when you're having political issues or geopolitical issues there, it helps to say, okay, how do we make a deal with a friendly country. How do we support our own mining and development? Look at energy independence and how the fossil fuel is being produced, you know, in Texas and elsewhere are helping us maintain some energy independence. Look at what's going on in China and Europe right now that don't have complete energy independence. China's going back to rebuild uh, its coal plants and opening coal factories and increasing pollution. And they're in a panic because they don't want any energy exports right now. They issued emergency proclamation, please don't export any energy, keep it in China. Look at what's happened in the UK and in, in Europe without, without their own production of uh, the fossil fuels that they need. Their, their, their wind turbines don't provide enough base load. Their solar doesn't provide enough base load. They're in serious trouble. So this goes to the very basis of economics. It goes to the very basis of geopolitical independence of the United States. If you like an, to be an individual person, you need to pay attention to geopolitical independence. And a large part of that is our commodity base and our trade base. And if you want to stack the shiny, you got to support the miners. If you don't support the miners, you don't have the shiny you need tomorrow. Your kids don't have it. And basically, what's going to happen is you're going to be subject to whatever the central bank wants to give you as money, and we're going to be screwed. Okay. I just want to impress that point. So brought this out on a Monday. I'm not doing a specific mining stock today, but I'm going to continue to do the mining stocks because it's important that we look at these and consider funding them so that we have our independence and that we have our shiny and we have all the other products that we use on a daily basis. But I think this video will illustrate why it's so important and why on Gold Silver Pro's channel, we talk about the entire life cycle of the gold and the silver and the other commodities that we need. Because if you just stack the shiny and you ignore the beginning, you don't have the shiny, okay? 
And without all the, the mining effort, the labor, the money, the energy that goes into it, these don't retain value. Why are these money? Because they have the value of the mining and refining that went into them. If these were just free laying above ground, it wouldn't matter how rare they are, they would not have the value. It's the beginning of that cycle which provides them that value. That's why I talk about the mining stocks, the refining process, take you on mine tours and do stuff like that at my own expense for free for you to educate you on that. If you're a millennial listening to this, I think some of you have started to wake up. At Silver Symposium, I talked to two millennials, one from Texas, one from somewhere else I can't remember, somewhere in the United States. They said, I understand the value of gold and silver, but also commodities. And I want to look at some of these companies for my portfolio. And that is a really good sign. The millennials for so long have been disconnected as to what creates this and what provides all this around us. It's the commodities. It's the materials and resources. But now they're starting to wake up. And guess what? They're looking at them as an investment. And guess what? That's going to raise the prices of gold and silver and the other commodities. Okay, we're in that commodity super cycle. So wanted to bring you guys this information. I think it's helpful information to help educate some of you that don't understand. You just came here from a Stack the Shiny channel or you just found me because I have gold, silver pros in my name. And you're like, hey man, I want to stack the shiny. Well, there's other parts to it that we need to be aware of. And there could be potentially great value in there for you as well. That's why I bring it to you. If you had invested in uranium, when Steve and I were talking about it, you already made a lot of money. You could have sold out and already made a lot of money. The gold and the silver um, have done pretty well since we started the channel, gold better than silver. We think they're going to continue to increase in value. Lead, tin, zinc, all of those are doing extremely well. Lumber, all of those are doing well. So if you invest in the commodities lifestyle, you can make a fair amount of money. And again, offset the central bank robbing you of your labor over time through the hidden tax of inflation. There's ways that you can play the game that put you at the poker table and offset what, you know, what the bad guys are trying to do. And, and that's not just stacking the shiny. That's the rest of it as well. So I think a super important point that I wanted to bring to you guys today, we'll come back next week with another mining stock. I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet. I have some ideas, but we'll come back and, and we'll do a, a review of that. For those of you that don't want to invest in stocks, that's totally fine. You don't have to watch that. But for the rest of us, understand the commodity life cycle and understand that we don't have this and this doesn't have value without those mining and, and refiners and the labor and the energy that goes into it. Please pay attention to the mining stock series on Mondays. I think it'd be very, very important to help supporting our own domestic industries and North American industries to supply the critical minerals we need, two of which are gold and silver, right here at Gold Silver Pros. Thank you guys. Till next time, this is Rob Keats, goldsilverpros.com. Hey guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications and go to goldsilverpros.com and sign up for the free newsletter so you can get your updates.